Okay. So, hi everyone. Welcome to the third session of the Nebula program. Um, we're really happy that you are here with us today. And um, I'm gonna just go through our welcome and introduction. Um, as always, uh, this call is being recorded and transcribed. So please keep your camera off if you uh, mind sharing your, your face. Um, the video will be published in our YouTube channel in the next few days. And right now we have captions um, enabled in other AI, so you can go to the link that is pasted on the on the notepad, um, and also you can find that in the um, top left corner of Zoom. You can click on other AI and then um, go to the live transcript. Also, we're gonna say this in every call, but we have a code of conduct and community participation guidelines. So please just be kind to one another. This code of conduct applies to all of our spaces, this call, all our Slack as well, and your coaching sessions that are coming up um, this week and, and in the next weeks as well. So if you experience any unacceptable behavior or you have any concerns, please report it by contacting the organizers. Um, and if that is, there's an issue that involves one of us, then please email one of the members individually. We're gonna have uh, breakout rooms and please let us know if you could prefer to participate uh, by writing and you could you can put a W in front of your name. If you prefer uh, participating by speaking, you can put an S in front of your name. Um, and if you're okay with both, just please choose one for this week so that we know which breakout room we can uh, assign you to. And with that, I just wanna share my screen really quickly to um, kind of share where we are. At the, at the moment in the cohort. So I'm gonna do that. Let me, let me put this in presenter mode for sharing. Can you see that? Okay. So, um, again, welcome. Um, just a, as a quick recap of last week, we covered the first module of the program, which is the ethos of open science. That is the introduction or the essence of open science. And we started to learn what is open science, why it is important, and some barriers uh, to open science and considerations when not to be open. So that is the first module. And we are in the second module, which covers tools and resources for open science in general. This session, we will cover um, open science strategies and data management plans. So this is a topic that we will repeat um, in the following sessions but more specifically in how they apply to, for example, data, code, or publications. So what we're gonna learn today, we're gonna then um, review in the follow-up sessions um, more specifically to different areas of open science. And again, like another thing that we learned last week is an introduction to our community, OLS. Um, I know that we introduced several practices um, that model what for us is an open community and how they work. For example, allowing people to participate in different ways. That's why we emphasize people to, to let us know if you prefer to write or speak. Uh, we also introduced the collaborative notes so that, um, that works as documentation for our sessions and also just to let people share what they're thinking and learn from one another. Um, and we um, encourage you all to use the Slack channel. Uh, that's also another space for 
everyone in the community to share resources. So um, we're trying to model here how we see open science communities working. And hopefully that's also another way that you are seeing the principles of open science in practice. With that, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm going to um, pass it over to uh, um, Joe. Do you wanna introduce our presenter? I can do that. Yes. Yeah, no, I'll be very happy. Um, so I'm delighted to be introducing our speaker today who has uh, been a long time OLS community member, uh, Elise Jafsia, I do believe. I'm saying this without looking at the notes and just feeling super confident. This is where I scroll up in a panic. It's not really a panic. It is. It is you, Jafsia. Um, Jafsia is one of the most inspiring people I know when it comes to actually making sure that others have skills and choices in their life and bringing equity as well as openness to the work that he does. Um, Jafsia, are you uh, ready to start your presentation? Oh, well, yes, definitely. So Jafsia, I'm gonna be sharing your slides. They are already showing in the screen, I think. Um, do let me know when you want me to change them. Okay. Thank you so much, Irene. Thank you uh, so much, you. Today I'm going to, to present open science strategy and data management plans. And uh, for our today presentation, we know that in an era marked by unprecedented technological advancement and an ever-growing volume of research output, the need for open and transparent scientific practices has become paramount. So as we embark on this journey, we will examine the core tenets of open science, highlights in its transformative potential in dismantling barriers to knowledge dissemination and promoting inclusivity in the scientific community. We'll also explore various strategy and initiatives that have emerged to foster open practices. Furthermore, we will dive into the realm of data management planning, emphasizing its significance in ensuring the integrity, accessibility, uh, and long-term preservation of research data. We will explore the key components of a robust data management plan, discuss best practices and guidelines for effective data manage, the data documentation, storage, security, and sharing. Next slides. Okay, that's me, Jafsia Elise with my OLS polo. I was uh, in Okazaki in Japan. So I'm um, a data scientist actually in Boalap in Cameroon and also a teacher of physics. Next slide. Okay, let's take some few minutes of reflection on the following questions. Uh, let's say take two to three minutes and reflect on those bullets and try to write something in the chat or in the etherpad. pad. The questions are, how can I best collaborate on writing software? What can I share? How can I share? When should I make my data publicly available? How can I best share the result of my project? How long should I plan to maintain my software? Where am I going to store all the data I collect? So try to write something. 
about the question related to your project. Folks, I've um, posted in the chat the uh, link to an Etherpad section where you can type answers to any of those questions uh, that you, once you've had a chance to think about them. But it's also fine to post it in the chat as well. Etherpad or the chat, either is fine. Some great answers coming in uh, on the etherpad and also discussions using the threads in the Zoom chat. Um, Jassi, I think we want to give them a minute or two more until the typing slows down. So I think we're good for now. But thanks, everyone. Keep it coming in. Thank you. Lots of great answers in the chat. So let me read this one. As a researcher, I can share my work on LinkedIn and researcher and research gate. Only those which have published in open access from Samira and from Dr. Sarwan, as a researcher committed to disseminating knowledge, I actively share my scholarly contribution on professional networks, such as LinkedIn and ResearchGate, Scope Goals, Web of Science. However, it's important to note that I only share those works that are published on open access platform, ensuring they are freely and ethically accessible to my 
wider academic community and interested public. This practice not only complies with sharing guidelines, but also promote the authors of open science. From Sauda to Baba, I can share by publishing and also by conference presentation. Okay, thank you so much for the valuable answers. Okay, let's now jump to our presentation. It's clear that um, most of you exactly know what they want to do. Some have uh, an insight of open science and uh, they want to, they, they know exactly what they want to do in open science. So maybe let's jump today to some of our open source, open science strategies that I'm going to present uh, to you. Next slide, please. Okay. The first part of our presentation will be about open science strategies for collaboration and impact. Last week, we talked about open science, and then we delved into the importance and benefit of open science. So now, let's talk about strategies or approaches that can promote transparency and collaboration and accessibility of our research. Next slide. Our first strategy is open access. And open access is about ensuring free and unrestricted access to research output, including journal articles, preprints, and other scholarly work. And we, we can see this through uh, the answer of, of Mawa, who said, okay, I can start by publishing by publishing my research in open access scientific journals, which provide free access to scientific content for everyone. So this is about open access. And the benefits of open access are widening the dissemination of knowledge, increase the visibility and impact of research, facilitate interdisciplinary collaboration and innovation. And as we said, the examples for open access, we have open access journals, as most of you have written in the, the chat. We have institutional repository Next slide for The other strategy is open collaboration. And open collaboration is about encouraging collaboration effectively knowledge sharing about among researchers, fostering a culture of openness and inclusivity. The benefits of open collaborations are to enhance interdisciplinary research and innovation, to enable pooling of resources, expertise, and data, to accelerate progress and discovery. Okay, examples, we have open science community, Generally, for open collaboration, it's advised to join open science, uh, open science communities like OLS, actually, Open Seed OLS, or other collaborative platforms like Slack, like our Slack in OLS and the Slack for the Nebula group, 
where we can share exchange about open science practice and collaborate to effectively share knowledge and, and fostering our, our culture of openness. Next slide for the other strategy. Another strategy is open peer review. Open peer review is about adopting transparent and inclusive peer review processes, allowing for community engagement, constructive feedback, and quality assurance. And the benefits from open reviews about increasing transparency, constructive feedback, and improvement of research, facilitating diverse perspectives and reduce bias. For example, we have open peer reviews. We have pre-publication peer reviews. Yeah, I'm just gonna um, say out loud what Irene said in chat. Uh, Jelsia's connection is uh, being a bit reluctant. So um, I'm gonna turn my video off, just in case that- uh, For open peer uh, review. Uh, Jelsia, could you just um, repeat the last couple of sentences? Cause we lost you. Do we still have them here? We do. Okay. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you are aware of it, but there is this uh, internet cable submarine, uh, which has been broken in the sea. So it, it's a cab, a submarine cable jo uh, joining Africa to Brazil. So actually, there is. I think since one week, there is a huge internet problem in Africa. Well, um, so I, hope, I think I've noticed uh, certainly, the cable will, be, um, will yeah. be fixed. Yeah, let's ho let's hope it's fixed uh, soon. Uh, we we can hear you okay now, so please do continue. Okay, thank you so much. Next slide. Okay, then we can jumped into open source, which is another strategy. So open source is about promoting the use of open source software and tool. And uh, most of the time, we The internet may not be our friend today. <laughs> Let's give it a moment more and see if he comes back. It's to promote the use of open source software and hardware. Hmm. What do you think, Irene? Shall I pretend to be Jafsia? Put my Jafsia face mask on. <laughs> do you want to? Okay, let's um keep an eye open at some point. Jafsia will... Oh, you're back! You're back! We got uh we got you said open source software and hardware, uh, and then the internet cable was mean again. Do you want to give it another go? Um, if it keeps on being a bit of a pain, we might step in, but go for it again. I think we lost Japsy again. Yep, I think we did. Okay, thanks everyone for um, your patience. Uh, 
Josia has prepared this presentation and I haven't pre-reviewed it. So wish me luck as I continue to try and present. Um, so open source uh, when it basically means sharing your code if you write code, and that could be one line of R code. It could be something you've done in Excel. It could be that actually you are a software engineer and you're really confident uh, with sharing or with writing code, any of that. Sharing that allows people to see your research, rerun it and make it more effective. Um, but it could be hardware as well. Um, and uh, Jassia is actually an expert in open hardware. He uh, works in a maker lab where they share the designs of the things that they are creating. They talk about the materials they use to create these. Um, so openness can be about many different, um, open source can be about many different types of whether it's physical or whether it is digital things that you're sharing. Uh, but the, the, the idea is that you're sharing the plans and the instructions so that other people can do the same thing as well. Um, Irene, next. Open data. By the way, Jasia, checking if you're, if you're uh, back yet. Yes, I'm back. Okay, I'll give I'll give open data back to you and I'll step in if you falter. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Okay, um for open data. Open data is about sharing research data in a transparent and accessible manner, enabling verification, replication, and reuse. So uh most of the time when we have data. We want our result to be replicable. We want our result to be verifiable. So it's really important to have them transparent and accessible so that other researchers can use them maybe to solve other problems. So the benefits of open data spans from enhancing reproducibility and transparency in research, enabling data discoveries and new insight, and also promote promoting collaboration and interdisciplinary research. Examples, we have data, open data repository, we have data sharing platforms, and uh, we have data publication policies. Next slide. Okay, from all these elements that we have listed, the peer review, the data, the collaboration, the access, we can assemble them into two sets of openness when we have to design. So when we have a project, we have two options. The project can be open by default or maybe open by design. So generally, when we have a project, the project starts with the ideation and ends with the reporting, publication, and dissemination. And every step of, of our project has an output. For example, here for the ideation, we have the proposal. For the planning phase, we have the data management. So we have to plan for openness during each step of our project. And this can only be done either through openness by default or through openness by design. But what is openness by default and openness by design? Next slide. Openness by default is the practice of making research openly accessible and available by default, unless there are reasons of restriction for not doing so. And open by design, it refers to the intentional incorporation of practices through the research process from planning, collection, 
for analysis, publication, and dissemination. So one question that I will ask, do you think your project actually, the project that you have designed, is it open by default or open by design? Feel free to, to unmute and answer or maybe to write in the chat. Jasia, could I get you to just restate that question one more time and then I'll post it in the chat as well? Checking. I don't know if I just spoke on mute or not. <laughs> we have listed we have listed four strategies the open access, the open peer review, the open collaboration, the open data, the open source. And, and we said that all these strategies can be assembled into two sets of openness, either open by design or open by default. And we said open by default is when you are making your research accessible and available by default. So uh, when you start your research, you say, okay, everything will be open. That's the thing I don't have, I have nothing to hide. I will open everything, data, code, everything will be open. The article at the end will be open. And open by design is, like, okay, I will incorporate open practices in some parts of my project. And then I was asking if some of you, based on your project actually, have an idea if their project will be open by default or open by design. That was my question. Thanks. I've put the short version of the question into the chat as well, um, but please do sh share answers. And thank you, Priya, for already sharing yours. Okay, Priya said, for example, my project is by design, but not strict guidelines for some point, but strict on some point. I mean, some are encouraged, while some are mandatory. Okay, open by design. We have two open by design. Still open by design for Esdras. Open by design. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, that's it. We, we have all noticed that open science strategies uh, have encompasses a, a, a range of practices that promote transparency. And as we, as we said, everything is around transparency. Transparency, collaboration, and accessibility in research. And uh, when we implement open source, open science strategies, we can contribute to a more inclusive and impactful research ecosystem, fostering innovation and advancing knowledge. Okay, this was the last slide of my presentation for this first part. I don't know if there are questions eventually, and then I 
I will answer them. Uh, Jessia, there's one really good question uh, from Alejandra. Um, we're saying, are there, are there benefits to being uh, open by design rather than default? Or are there reasons why you might choose one over the other? Uh, which I thought was a great question. I've written my thoughts in the chat, but I'd love to hear yours. Okay. Thank you so much. I think um, both has advant have advantages and uh, the benefits are there. Open by design for someone like me coming from maybe uh, a background in hardware, I remember when uh, we started working on the open flexural microscope, the open flexural microscope was opened by default. So when we started working on it, I saw the design and I started thinking that, okay, this is the design and uh, I, will, I, I can replicate it. So it, I was able to replicate uh, the, 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 the design and to print, to 3D print it without any difficulty. When I went to, I, I, I contacted Michelle Bowman, it was just on a code problem and he answered directly to me. And there was also a problem uh, uh, because when I got the code, I saw that there was a problem. And, most of, and the problem was what? The problem was the language on, uh, on, on the software. We wrote to him, we told him, okay, we want to, to improve the code. He told us, okay, you have no problem, you can improve it as you want. We improved the code in Cameroon and contacted him to tell him that, okay, we have improved the code. He said, oh, that's good. Okay, let's merge, merge it in the repository so that uh, uh, we, we, we can highlight to our community that, okay, there was something done on, on the, the code and maybe improve, even improve the design of, of the open flexure microscope. And uh, sometimes for this is the open by default. When we have the open by design, so it, it means that, okay, you have, you want, you have things that you want to keep for yourself. I think it's not bad uh, because sometimes we need, we, we also need to have some, I will say, uh, a small percentage of ownership of what we have, we have done. So I think that's, it's a balanced thing. We have to be balanced to know exactly what we want. It's not just like, okay, uh, it's open by default. Uh, it's for, uh, the sake of the humanity, or uh, maybe, okay, we are researchers and we want to have, uh, I would say, a percentage of ownership of the things that we are doing. So I think it should be balanced, sometimes between default and sometimes between design. Uh, this is my part of reflection about this question. I've got to say, yes, I, I'm sorry. Take it away, Alejandra. Yeah, sorry, I was I, I was uh, typing, but I think it's better if I just open my mic. So thank you so much. I think I better understand the differences. I think now it's more clear. Thanks for the answer. Thank you. So, uh, just yeah, how are we doing for time? Uh, do you want to move on to the exercise? Yes, we can go to the exercise. Okay, if you want to introduce it, I'll set up the breakout rooms. Okay, we have this exercise. We'll take 10 minutes to discuss the exercise in our breakout rooms, then uh, come back in the main chat for the wrap up. Uh, five minutes and discuss what we have exchanged in our various breakout rooms. So the question is what data 
software or publication do you currently use or would like to use? Are they open or closed? So maybe for 10 minutes, if we have three persons per breakout rooms, we can take three minutes per person to discuss. Okay, uh, the rooms are ready. Can I just have a thumbs up? Um, oh, no, we don't have many people. If you understand what we need to do, if you're happy with the instructions. We've got some thumbs. Any other thumbs? Give me confidence that, yep, okay. Thank you, my friend. Um, there's a great question from Priya about whether software um, is closed, whether it has a payable license. Uh, and the answer very quickly, we'll cover this in one of the later lessons, is um, software that you can see the code to run, maybe free, free as in like you don't have to pay money for it, or maybe you have to pay for it. But usually code that you pay for is closed, but it's not a complete overlap. Uh, we'll go in, into more details later on. For now, I will give you 10 minutes. Remember to make sure that everyone in your room has a chance to speak. I think we still have a few more seconds before everyone is back. I always love it when people are like, nope, I'm going to stay in the breakout room until the last possible moment. You will not wrench me out of the breakout room. We've got 14 seconds. <laughs> Hopefully that means that they are having a great discussion. Better than... Uh, fist fights <laughs> all right uh i think that's it and the last breakout rooms have just popped uh it was good to see you all hanging on for the last moment see how many seconds of uh sentence you can sneak into the last minute of breakout room my friend um Jafsia, how would you like to take this forward do you have any questions or should i pass it back over to irene Yes, I will have a question. Maybe one person in this uh, record rooms will try maybe to, to summarize what they have discussed in their various uh, in their various groups to try to share what they have discussed or maybe summarize what they have said. Sounds good. I've got the list of breakout rooms. So I'm going to, um, people won't remember what room you're in. I don't think you memorize, oh, I was in room three. But if I read the names out, uh, please be gentle with me if I mispronounce your name um, and nominate <laughs> me a speaker. So room one had Joanna Saadatu and uh, Dr. Salwan. Could I get uh, one of you to please just share what uh, you chatted about? Thank you, Joanna. Um, out of curiosity, did you uh, find uh, that they were mostly open, mostly closed, or were they a mix? Oh, I'll just read as well for the recording. Uh, so Joanna in, in uh, chat says here, we spoke about software we use in our various fields. Python, Google, Google Scholar, Kaggle, MATLAB for the training model, research and access to data sets. Um, so, yeah, if you have any, um, uh, these are just daily work tools. Uh, I guess maybe when we talk a little bit more about software in one of the later modules, we'll talk about some of the differences between closed and open, because I think that's going to be quite a big question. Um, from room two, 
Um, I have Ahmed, Anna, and Andrew. Does anyone like to uh, share back what you chatted about? Ahmed, you could you could tell them. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> thank so, you. Well, thank you, thank you, Anna. So, so we've discussed about the repositories that are used to collect uh, dissertations, uh, and also the the different open source softwares and tools that are available now, uh, including the Open Science Framework uh, by Center for Open Science, and also were the challenges that uh, relate to the in how to reach and how to use these tools, specifically any the differences in, in, in geographical regions, for example, that in, in some uh, regions or some countries, there is a lack of uh, the necessary in funding and infrastructure. But yeah, that was uh, the, the main discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, apologies that I had my hands to my ears. I have a lot of background noise. I hope it's not coming through in the microphone as well. <laughs> um, room three, we had Madison, Wani, um, Elisa, Yossia, and Priya. Who's reporting that? Uh, I'll go ahead and start. Uh, so it was a really, really insightful conversation. We quickly went around the room and introduced ourselves and our backgrounds and how we typically use open science and sometimes closed science. And uh, I know myself personally, I shared that um, as a student and as a career professional and as a researcher, I think it's really important to be able to use open science tools as much as possible, um, especially for students, because it fosters this kind of collaborative community where you're able to learn and you're not being restricted by paying memberships and trying to track down publications and articles that can sometimes be pretty entwined in those closed data portals. So we all just kind of agreed that open science has a lot of great benefits for all of us in our professional lives, in our academic lives, and agreed that one of the main reasons we all registered to be part of this program was to help spread awareness on why open science should be more prevalent. Thank you, Madison. Uh, room four, Samira, Vivian, and Heba. Hello. Um, we had just uh, discussed um, a lot of uh, things about software data transformation uh, in Egypt, Iraq, and uh, Brazil. So um, we are we discussed uh, me and my colleagues about the working process saving that data, the cloud that uh, we save our uh, database um, in our work. Uh, me, as a pharmacist in the Ministry of Health in Egypt, we use a chat. Uh, it's an application, but it's secured. We only have the access, um, the employees that in the governmental sector only. So yes, we have to uh, we we may or we can um, share our um, data or files with my manager or with my team. So we all can share uh, this uh, private data uh, that um, mainly in, in our process in uh, government sector uh, in this application. Um, and I just uh, mentioned to the to my colleagues that we have a big conference about digital transformation, science diplomacy, and yes, in May. So I, I can post it in our application and you are all welcome to, to visit Egypt. Uh, it will be in May, Cairo. Um, it, may, it will be in Cairo uh, in May. Uh, that's it. But I think it's um, like a big, conference about ICT, digital transformation, open science, um, um, uh, all uh, countries are welcome uh, because, you know, Egypt is the in the Middle East and it's in the middle of the world. So 
we are um, appreciating to um, be in this conference and uh, we are hosting such a, a conference. Uh, Vivian also from Brazil, she told me about uh, their secure um, um, like system or something and this uh, era is, uh, I think it's new to Brazil to be uh, working with. Uh, in Iraq also, uh, Samira, she told me, Samira, yes, I, I think her name is, yes, Samira. Uh, she told me also she is using a lot of websites and um, uh, such um, sites because she is working in the Ministry of Education. So, um, and Vivian is a lawyer. So we are all a mix sciences uh, that we discussed our process in work. So we have a good discuss. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heather. Uh, it's really good to hear the different open and closed tools that everyone uses and to recognize that no matter how much we love open science, A, there's space for closeness when it's appropriate, and B, we have to live in the real world and use private and closed tools as well as the open ones that we share when we can. Um, I think we have one more room left. I only have two people. I have um, Estras and Alejandra. Is one of you able to report back? Uh, yes, I'm here. I think I can briefly introduce what this is. But we were three people. Uh, either we're missing your third, or um, they might might have dropped if they had to leave or had an internet problem. Okay. Okay. Cool. So we discuss our different projects in Iraq, in Cameroon, and in Colombia. My project. Uh, so uh, it they are very different. So from open science to also like building a source for like an open an open source for for education and also like an open data set. Let's say maybe we can call it like that for raising awareness about the the talent and the brains from Cameroon that are living the country. So we discussed the three cases, and uh, I think we found uh, mainly the use of open data. I think all of us, we are mainly using open data, or we want to open it. So I think we are aiming for open for, for by default, as like from the previous discussion. And in my case, in specific, I'm also... I have been struggling to find open tools for the specific needs that I have. So I ended up working with non-open tools like lately. So we discussed that and also they were helping me and giving me examples of, or open tools of maybe like from their experience. So that, that was part of the discussion. And yeah, I'm not sure if one of my colleagues want to share something else. I think we're good. Um, Irene, I'm going to pass the reins over to you, but I'm going to, I think we're going to have to maybe make that second activity like homework or do it in the Slack because we've only got 20 minutes left. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, thank you, Joe. So, Jeffs, yeah, is it okay if we move on to the second part of your presentation? Yes, thank you, Irene. Okay, so I will. Uh, turn off my video again, just to help the connection. Um, and I'm gonna share the, the slides again. Okay, let me put it in presenter mode again. Okay, um, do you see that now? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, during our breakout rooms, uh, I've noticed that uh, we were mostly at the end of our breakout room, most of the people we were talking about uh, data, open data, open data, 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 okay. 
Um, in a song, someone uh, was saying that in the body of the word, money is the blood. And I think in the body, I will paraphrase by saying that in the body of science, data is the blood. So we want to use data. We need data. And then for our data, we, we need a data management plan. We need a plan for our data. We need a plan for the data of our projects. And I think uh, open science and data management plans are there to enhance the credibility and uh, the reproducibility of our research by ensuring that our data is well documented, organized, preserved over time. Next slide. Why do we plan for our data management? The first thing is to save time. Okay. If we don't plan, we'll spend most of our time looking for data or doing other things that will serve to do uh, maybe to, to, to go further with our research. We plan to avoid problems. So uh, we also plan because we, we are anticipating cost. Because you know when we are using data, there is a hidden cost. And by planning, we can be able to maybe know exactly what we can expend with the data we are going to use or the data we are going to collect or the data we are going, we are using, we are, we are, we are asking from someone else. And also we are using data, we are planning because we want to be fair in our design. Remember we're talking about open by design and open by default. That's another aspect when we are working on our data and that we are trying to, we are designing a data management plan. Next slide. So actually, data management plans are increasingly required by institutional policies and research funder. So uh, generally, when you are applying for a grant, uh, you are writing your proposal, maybe not at the proposal level, but you, you should think about developing a data management plan when we are started writing a grant proposal. Another point is to recognize the intrinsic value of our data. And when we have a data management plan, it's a good sign to help us increase our scientific integrity and help the reuse of our data. And we know, as I said earlier in this presentation, a well-written data management plan can help you win funding because it demonstrates your skill at doing open science. So behind a good data management plan, there are dollars. Next slide. Okay, the content of a data management plan. In a data management plan, we'll have the data management plan itself, itself the DMP. We can have the software management plan if we are developing a software. We can have publication sharing. We can also have other open science activities. And we need to also include the roles and responsibility, responsibility of the people involved. 
in the data management plan. So for the data management plan, the first point, we should know that uh, every major research foundation now requires science, scientists to file a data management plan along with your proposed research plan. So data and other elements such as code, publication, have their own life cycle and workflow. So which need to be in the plan. The data management plan are a crucial aspect of open science and help keep other researchers informed and on track throughout the data management life cycle. So the DMPs that are successful typically include some clear terminology about the FAIR principle. I think that will be the next session. So I, I will not extend myself on the FAIR principle now and how they will be applied on your DMP. So it's important to know that the research data that I use in the data management plan are variable, are reusable. Long after the project. So, and that I use can extend beyond our own lifetimes, I think. Therefore, uh, when designing a project or supporting an existing corpus of data, we need to remain cognizant of what happened to the data after our own research interaction ends. So for the content of our DMP, we'll have a description of the data expected to be produced from the proposed activities, including the type of the data to be produced, the approximate amount of each data type, the machine readable format of the data, the data file format, and any applicable standard for the data or associated metadata. We have the repository or repositories that will be used to archive data and metadata arising from the activities and is coded for making data publicly available. There is also the description of data type that are subject to relevance, law, regulation, or policy that exclude them from data sharing requirement. And we have the roles and responsibility of project personnel who will ensure implementation of the data management plan. For the software management plan, this is to describe how a software will be managed, preserved, or released as part of a scientific process. So this helps ensure transparency and reproducibility in the scientific process. But we will not extend ourselves. This is on the module four, I think, uh, on open code share. So for the first, for the software uh, management plan, we have the description of the software, the repositories, the sharing guidelines, the personal roles and responsibility, or any community information available around the software. So this is about um, the other elements, the publication plan. Uh, we have in the publication plan, we will describe how result will be managed. This is to describe about how result will be managed, preserved, and released. In other words, how we communicate our findings, uh, how the elements we use in our publication are in compliance with other rules and regulations within our organization. And uh, we, as with the data, uh, it serves also as a foundational framework for our project from the start to the finish. Next slide.
So, when starting drafting our data management plan, we have things to think about, which are our research artifacts. And some of the questions are, will my research create the materials? It's whether data, code, result, or sample. Uh, where will this material be stored? How will people find these materials created from my project? Will people know how to use my material? Are people allowed to use my material? Who can answer questions about my material? How should my material be, be seated? This is the framework about developing my data management plan from the material and answering all these questions will help me design effectively and efficiently a data management plan. So I, 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 and we say that an open science and data management plan answers all the questions that we are asked in a formalized manner. Next slide. Now for the data, we are talking about the data and there is this element, that, that, that point that's really essential to know which data we are using and how they are protected. For data, we have two types of protection. We have ownership protection and we have copyright protection. For copyright protection, we have raw data. Raw data are not copyright protected. So we, all, we can use them without, they are not protected by copyright. And the data that could be protect, and the data protected by copyright are maybe table or graphs, data sets, data compilation, databases, purchase data, and literally music, drama, artics, works, and everything photo. This, are data protected by copyrights. But for the raw data, but it will also depend on the type of raw data that we have, they are not protected by copyright. And then we have the second type of data, the second type of protection, which is the ownership protection. Next slide. For the copyright ownership, we have primary data. We know that primary data is data most of the time that we are, we are collected. Most of the time are data that we, we generally collect ourselves. And uh, for primary data, it says that if copyright exists, you are probably the owner, but you should check the agreement or contract related to your research project to confirm. For secondary data, so data from other sources, if copyright exists, it is likely owned by others. And for tertiary data, which are data, which are from the, the synthesis of data from experiments or research conducted by others, like articles, reports, etc., written by other, for which you do not own the copyright. So it's good to know that, yes, we need data. We need those elements to quantitatively maybe demonstrate 
what we are doing with, with our research. But it's also good to know that, okay, we have the right to use these ones or we have the right to ask for the other ones that we want to use. We need to permission the permission to use them or maybe they are opened and we can use them freely. So that's why I've added these two slides about the copyright and uh, the copyright protection and the ownership protection. Next slide. Um, just a sorry for interrupting. We have five minutes left in the session. Do you think we can wrap up in uh, two or three minutes? Mm, no, I think two or three minutes is, is not enough. Um, okay, so I will um, kind of go on to next on to the next slide. Uh, but we do have five it's, minutes. It's yeah. the last one. Okay. Um, it's the last again, one. So I'm I'm just gonna say that if people have to drop out drop out at the hour, uh, feel free to do that. The recording is still running, and we will share the full presentation after. So okay. thank you, Jesse. Okay, as a summary, we will say that uh, there is no one way of doing open science. And any step we take to make science more open are extremely valuable, especially as we transition to more open scientific ecosystem in the future. So open science and data management plans provide a plan for how open science is integrated into a project, including the sharing of data, software, code, and result, etc. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff. That was actually in time. Um, so can we please give Jeff a round of applause And you can also use the, the reactions in the in the Zoom. Uh, yeah, I can see a lot of a lot of emojis. So thank you so much, Devsia. That was a really great overview of uh, how to assemble different open strategies into um, a plan that takes you from beginning to end in the research process. And as um, as we said in the in the chat, and as Javsia was emphasizing. We will cover these topics in detail um, in the next sessions that are focused on um, data code and publications. So I just, I'm just gonna mention a few announcements before we wrap up. Um, you will receive an email introduction with your coach and hopefully you can meet this week. If that is not possible, you can also meet early next week so don't worry about that. You will still get your um, all the full coaching sessions, which are going to be five. Um, and let me see. So tomorrow we we have um, office hours at the same time of the of the sessions, um, and we have the next training session on Thursday, as well as uh, an additional open office hours um, on Friday in the morning. So we will share the links to join um, on a Slack. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything for this session. Again, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, thank you, Jepsia, for um, giving us this presentation. Thank you, Joe, for um, helping facilitate and host. And um, yeah, so again, thank you everyone. I'm gonna stop the, the recording. And...